Welcome to Tech Titans episode two. Yours truly, Sly Gittins. I have ICS Gabe here, and we are ready to give you some information about how we picked our majors in college, how did it affect our, um, our entry level jobs, and do you really need a degree to be successful within the cybersecurity field in the IT field? Are you ready? So I'm going to have Gabe kick it off and he's he going to tell you about his story. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah. I think that, um, so kind of on the subject of picking your major and jumping into cybersecurity and kind of how these all play together, I guess this is kind of how I got into it, where a lot of times I kind of feel like I kind of fell into the field. Like I didn't feel like I was like, you know, fashioning, right? I came out of high school around 2006 or so um, in Detroit, Michigan. So cybersecurity wasn't a high consideration, but being from Detroit, which is which were, who we consider ourselves to be Motor City, um, automotive and industrial and manufacturing engineering was a heavy focus. So while I was in school, that was the focus. They were saying like, listen, uh, as you're coming out of high school, focus on engineering. Engineering, we need engineers in our manufacturing plants for our vehicles, for our facilities. So that was a big push. So going into school, I started off um, in electrical engineering where I went to, that was my major for college. And as I was going through that process, I'm learning about circuits, I'm learning about differential equations and calculus one and calculus two, a lot of theory, a whole lot of theory, where even though it's very good information, it teaches you how to step through a process and to get to a particular solution. A lot of it was theory and not a lot of it was applicable. Right. So I'm going through this particular process. So as I come out of college, um, the automotive field is just so there was a deep, deep, uh, strong decline in the automotive field uh, after the recession. But as I was coming out, that decline was uh, was healing itself. So the automotive industry was healing. So I started off as um, working at Ford Motor Company or as a, for a supplier, first party. I was working for a tier one supplier for Ford Motor Company. And there I was doing design and electrical engineering type of roles. But I was finding that there wasn't a lot of training in that particular field, right? I was seeing the same thing I was doing was the same thing guys nine, 10, 13 years later were doing. So I transitioned over into more of the utility side and there... That was a big change, right? That changed everything as it concerns cybersecurity for me. Because most recently, there was the Stuxnet virus that had it hit a particular plant, right? An Iranian plant over in the Middle East. And that pretty much was a big spiral in the whole commercial nuclear industry as it concerns cybersecurity and, and protecting nuclear facilities from cybersecurity attacks. So from there, that's pretty much when I was thrust into the environment because I was the youngest guy around. They're like, listen, you're the youngest guy around. We don't want to touch any computers in this plant. We're going to put you on these particular projects. So that was kind of how I jumped into cybersecurity. It was kind of by mistake. I was looking for training opportunities, and it resulted in me pretty much being on the front lines in commercial nuclear plants doing cybersecurity. So that's kind of how I went. Started off in electrical engineering, saw that there wasn't any training in automotive, jumped into utilities, and kind of fell, and cybersecurity kind of fell into my lap. So that's kind of my journey into cybersecurity. Oh, that's pretty cool, man. Um, thanks for sharing that uh, in your store and your background, because I know it's going to be helpful for those in college or going back to school, making that transition to with your foundational skills, right? So that, that that's pretty cool. Absolutely. Um, my story was a little bit different, right? Um, when I first got into college, English. Uh, I was going to be an English teacher, English professor. And um, I went through some family issues where I had to, uh, you know, I got to take care of my parents. So I ended up switching to business. Um, and I majored in marketing, right? And I liked marketing. I was really good at it. But one thing I saw was it seemed like a lot of people was graduating with a marketing degree. I did some research. I had a lot of graduates looking at the jobs. Again, it was pretty tight. The cream of the crop jobs at the time. And it was good. It was paying. But I was, you know, I wanted to do something different. And then I took my first IT class, got 100 on the first test. Didn't really study for it. Just kind of showed up, took the test, got 100, right? And I'm like, wow, is this, is this easy? But then when I, when I uh, talked to the teacher, he said uh, about 40% of the class didn't pass. Um, and even the people who did pass, they didn't, they didn't get perfect scores, right? So I'm like, all right, so maybe I got something here, right? And then I started naturally. I took the class. He convinced me to become an IT major. And um, it was fun, right? I took my first telecommunication class, aced it again. 
Um, and I'm studying for fun. I never really did that. I hit my stride, right? So I ended up graduating with a, a degree in business and two focus concentrations in marketing and IT. That's kind of my story in a nutshell, right? And the reason why I did both of those, right? I love to engage with people, talk to people. Hence the reason why I created this channel and why we're talking to you today. B, I love IT. I, I, since I was a little kid, I'm about eight years old. I built my first computer. Um, I used to hack into people routers near me. Um, I, used to, I just like playing with the settings, playing video games, trying to figure out how to make my speed better. So naturally, I just started getting into IT, and I and just I always been a part of me. Never really thought to put two and two together to go to school for it, because no one in my family did it. But um, for me, it, it definitely helped me out. It's kind of my differentiator. My differentiator when I go into interviews today, right? Um, I can talk about the business side. I understand the technical value and why we're we doing these, why we're we implementing it. And that's kind of my background. Hey, so let me ask you a quick question. So kind of as you're talking about, like, you had hit, you had hit your stride. So you're in the field, right? You're doing marketing. You have a focus in IT. In IT. So you had some previous experience, right? And yep. that experience came from college. And the yep. same, same thing here. I had a lot of like the technical and theoretical experience and that experience came from college. Do you see any of your peers or your colleagues who are in the field, who are exceptional at what they do, who don't have that college degree or who don't have that previous um, institution, educational institution exposure? I see that quite frequently, especially when I got my first job at Ingram Micro as a tech support rep. A lot of the guys there came up with a um, high school diploma. And some of these guys are just really, really, really outstanding, right? They had a, a great technical aptitude, the willingness to learn, and they was putting in those hours, right? Studying vigorously, right? And, um, and a lot of them that I talked to now went back in the co the, um, their company, actually paid for their college degree. So they started off without um, a, you know, a college degree, but got that experience. And they had that willingness to learn. And there's willingness to, to um, invest in the certifications. And it took a little bit longer, right? The one thing I found, the difference between myself and those individuals is if I need four years of experience, they may need six, right? Mm -hmm. But the, as a flip to that is, since they don't got any college debt, they can invest more into certification because they never did it before. And yeah. then if the company pays for it, sometimes they come out on top. So the answer Absolutely. to your question is yes. Um, and I, I see it quite often. So if you're on the fence, you're not sure about school, but you know you want to do IT security, I say, you know, find a job, mm -hmm. do it for two years. See, make sure that job will pay for your education and pay for your certification um, and make sure that job is going to build you skills that you can transferable skills that you can take it throughout your career. Um, and I think that's still a good, uh, a good outlook because, um, you yeah. know, there's a lot of certifications. Once you get it, someone will give you experience. And then if, you know, if you got that, that drive, that hustle to keep on moving forward, companies start investing in you. And then you start investing in yourself and um, you, you don't need necessarily a degree. But what about you, Gabe? What's, what's your thoughts on that, um, that same topic? Yeah, I would say a lot of my peers, even not only my peers on my same, I guess, work, work level, but even my manager, my first manager um, within a nuclear uh, plant, he was actually, he didn't actually have a, a college degree, but he actually went into the military, right? Okay. In the military, that's a whole nother realm where, you know, if you decide to go into the military rather than going to school, a lot of your education, well, all of your education is covered, right? Your tuition, your books, your trainings and all these things. So yeah. my manager who was, he was actually a Naval nuclear officer in the Navy. So that's how he transitioned over into the commercial nuclear plant side. And then from that experience, he was very technically adept because they have to take all types of exams in that particular field within the Navy. So they were, so he was very technically adept and he worked his way all the way up to a supervisor. And now he was the manager of the cybersecurity program, right? Mm -hmm. So he started off in that particular field, no college education, right? But he was educated through the Navy, but no college education and worked himself up to that of a supervisor and then a program manager. So I think just as you were saying, you know, I've experienced, you know, individuals who were very, very good at what they did, who didn't even go through the you know, the traditional educational realm. So kind of same thing, slide you were saying that, that there's different ways to get to the same point, right? There's multiple methods for getting to the same point. I might've taken my method, so I might've taken his method, but we have people within the industry who are amazing at what they do, who didn't go our same route. So I think that just as you were saying, if anybody's going through that particular experience, 
Don't feel discouraged if you didn't go to college. Don't feel discouraged if you didn't go the traditional route because yeah. you can get to the same point and maybe even, and, and that point is your point, right? It might not be our point, but it's your particular point. Yeah. Yep. And then like you said, um, everyone has their own story, right? Yeah. Um, one of the, one of my old colleagues had a history major mm. and you wouldn't think that would transition into IT security, but you know, she's really good at doing research. That's just half of her major. Right. So now, you know, she was just as good as the other IT people. She put the time in. She was able to code. She understood how to hack. She understood the technical components. She right. really put the time in to really perfect her craft. And everyone has a different journey. And you might come at it different levels. Like Gabe and I are both in IT security, and our jobs are vastly different. But we can find some commonalities within those fields, right, where we can learn from. Right. And then just know if you don't know everything, you know, you can try to do that on your own, but it's good to have a strong team, mm -hmm. right? So um, I think mean, that's kind of what we want to convey. Gabe, did you want to leave them with any last thoughts before you know, we conclude this episode? Absolutely. I think just one maybe closing thought is that your lane is your lane, right? Mm -hmm. If your lane doesn't look like someone else's lane, that doesn't mean that your lane is any less valuable or that even that your lane is not necessarily as, I mean, as more valuable than someone else. So, you know, fashioning what your career looks like, especially within security, there's so many different lanes that you can be in. And, you know, mm -hmm. just uh, go ahead and go about it the way that you desire to go about it. And you can obtain success in whatever lane that you're in. Well said. And one thing you can do for us is let us know what your lane is in the comments below. You know, what are you trying to do? Are you in school? Are you transitioning? Are you a current IT professional who can like to shed some knowledge? Um, let us know your thoughts on the bottom. And also let us know some topics you want to cover and we add it to our agenda. Um, again, thank you for taking this time to listen to us. I'm Sly Gittins and I also have I see it's Gabe signing up. <laughs> signing off. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Make sure to subscribe and click the bell to stay notified.